welcome everybody and uh, we're going to have a special edition of the town hall today mike lawson and i are going to hang back and we're going to kind of turn the reins over to a very good friend of mine uh ann leg from thrive who i've known a long time and uh is a frequent um guest on our podcast a frequent guest on cu broadcast um and just frequent you know that's that's you know kind of her if you want an adjective for her it's frequent it's frequent and uh so we'll get through the stuff here today and we're going to talk a little bit about ai and and i thought ann had a unique perspective and, and she wanted to kind of get some uh, information from the group so we're going to work with her to to use this session to kind of collect some stuff um so without further ado let's move on to the next uh slide here my name is john best i am the ceo and co-founder of best innovation group and uh we do fun things for credit unions right now. Apparently, we do lots of mergers. And so merger, 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 which, by the way, we came up with some cool stuff I'm excited to test using AI in the merger. So Ooh. we've come up with a use case for it. Um, you have even more and, mergers. Yeah. To Well, yeah. To just let the AI do it, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're excited about that. And so and with me is my other partner in crime, uh, another person I've known since his days at Scimitar and was very fortunate to... to you know, strike up a friendship with. We've been all around the world together, Austria, yeah. Singapore, you name it. We've been there. Literally. And uh, you know, I asked him to jump on this uh thing and he he said absolutely. And if there's one thing that Mike doesn't have is time. If you've ever seen him at JC, he has a long line. It's like he's giving away <laughs> something there. Um, but we don't know what it is. But uh, you know, he's he's uh, a brilliant interviewer, a kind guy and really understands the industry. And if you're not watching C broadcast, oh. you absolutely should. So Thank you, John. Uh, you're welcome. So let's uh, let's enough about us. Uh, and today's guest host, again, founder of Thrive Strategic Services, still based in uh, San Diego, right? Or just outside? My yeah. neck of the woods. I know. I'm Mike and I are only are only in town <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, we only see each other on the road. That's well, you're like in funny. Calabasas, aren't you, or something like that? Um, or needles? I forget. Um, <laughs> I am in San Diego, and Mike, you're just up in, in the northern part of San Diego. Yeah, I'm probably like 40, half hour, 45 minutes north of you, so yeah, yeah. not too far. Yeah. So Anne is uh, you know, a frequent contributor to a lot of things in the credit union. I've, I've had the good fortune of speaking uh, alongside her on panels and other things throughout the years, and she brings what I think is a very unique perspective to the credit union market. Um, <clears throat> it's a very important perspective because... It's really focused on member service uh, and data and, and how to bring all of those things together, which, you know, given kind of the environment right now, um, particularly that, you know, there's a good chance that we may be seeing uh, some more attacks on our our non -tax, our ta our tax status and whatnot. I think it's good to have uh, these kinds of perspectives around. And, and she pitched to me a few weeks ago, hey, I would like to do this. And it, it made sense to me. Uh, I, I've been kind of trying to do what she's talking about, but I think mine's a little more, one, it veers off into, I can't help myself, but to like show you crazy stuff that AI will do. I just veer off into that because every day I discover something new. But um, but I think Anne will keep us focused on kind of, uh, you know, how we're going to prepare, how we're going to, you know, what this looks like in gray ends. And I know that Mike and I all have been talking to a lot of folks about this. So yep. um so without further ado, uh, well, I, I think we have, do we have one more slide? Sponsor yep. slide? The sponsor yep. slides, yes, Q the councils or America's credit union councils or credit unions of the states, I don't know, uh, credit unions of the cave, uh, something like that. But uh, Kiana, <laughs> and actually, so I don't know if I told you this, Mike, but you remember that uh, that GAC thing I just did for that was CEOs only? Yeah. Um, and I'll ask Melissa to uh, Melissa and Madison to put it in here. But we are doing a Zoom version of that coming Ooh, up. It was really it, it had to turn people away. Um, so will that be open to the public or will it be like I, you know, that's a great I guess think only? It's, it's going to be CEOs only again, but I don't know how they vet it. So I say all you have to do is put CEO after your name and you should be able to get in. <laughs> now, you didn't hear that here, but, you know. There's a lot more room in the Zoom than there was in that room. A little bit, yeah. There's a little yeah, bit more so, room. Uh, but yeah, we'd love to we'd love to have you guys uh, join. So I'm sure Exciting. Melissa will put that information into the chat. 
And it was a really good session. Glenn and I, uh, you know, had a good time going over it. But, you know, there was a lot of honesty in that session. We talked about credit cards and and how we've been struggling with that. And, you know, I even did the whole thing. You've seen me do many times, Mike, where I asked about, you know, and this is a bunch of CEOs. If you have an Amazon account, raise your hand and then keep your hand up if your credit union's card is in first position or any position in the yeah. first position and then in position for payments. And again, a very small amount, but they were very candid and said, why? You know, um, but, you know, it, it comes back to that whole rate versus rewards thing. And, and people perceive those rewards, even though the interest rate can be up, you know, way outweigh the rewards. So we still haven't gotten a good way to tell that story. So I think that's out there. Well, also, I don't the, know if you uh, know Credit Card Competition Act, those rewards might be going away as well. So Right, could be. That watch could out for be. that stuff. Yeah. And so you can't, well, cash back rewards, I think, not necessarily April other types. I think just cash back, but I could be wrong. And, you know, the biggest player in that is Discover. And obviously they're on the block for City. So, hey, speaking of uh, stuff, fraud is on the rise. Have you noticed, Mike, you've been hearing a lot about it? A, a lot. Yes. Been talking yeah, a lot about that. The last that. session was amazing. Everybody participated that was really and good. we got a lot of information about the fraud that's happening out there and it is just going to increase. Um, so I highly recommend uh, if you don't have something like this already, uh, talk to Luma Labs. Uh, they have the voice recognition and you don't have to play the game of, you know, what was the last thing I bought? Where did you park your car last week? Uh, what color are your socks? You know, that sort of oh, stuff. Wow. I had to give uh, one crate in the pin to my phone. They, they wouldn't give me my stuff without me just giving them. <laughs> a pin. Um, but, you know, they've got a lot of good biometric technology that makes it real simple to identify someone. And I think that what we're seeing is the ability for the what, what AI is doing right now is it's, it's not so much enhancing the type of fraud that's happening. It's increasing the span of it. It's allowing them to do. <laughs> the same thing a hundred times, whereas before the manpower to do that would have been too much and, and they might do two or three. And it's all a, 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 it's all a game, you know, a game, a number game in the sense that if you do a hundred, it's like a, it's just like, a, you know, mailing, you know, what's the response for mailing? If you if you send out, you know, a thousand emails, what do you get, Elliot? You know, your, your general response is two or three percent. That's pretty good. It's the same thing for fraud. If they if they go out and try to hit five accounts and they only get one or two, that's not the much, but they do yeah. 100. So it's creating scale for them. And that's just the beginning because scale is where they started. And then they're going to increase the, uh, you know, the, the uh, effectiveness of the scams, I think, by using AI. So I think this is going to increase quickly. Um, and there's a lot going on around that. As a matter of fact, I just had a real long talk with uh, Saroop uh, Barawani from Senso.ai about this a couple days ago. Uh, speaking of that, um, that guess in. what? Oh, here's another one. Good example of this. My wife's, what's it say here? My my wife's Facebook got cover minutes. She was getting account takeover. Yep. If you're using the same account number, wow. you know, or same password, don't because they are moving fast and it only takes one to get. And somehow they just know where to find the rest. So you got to take a look at it and, and go through it. And speaking of next level home banking to provide security and, and next level, uh, you know, uh, the next target, I think, is going to be stuff like FedNow, uh, real-time payments, because what those are going to do, and we're already seeing this with um, Apple Wallet, which is the big scam that we've been seeing here where they're adding cards to Apple Wallet and then they have their own. It turns out I tracked it down, uh, uh, Mike. So it was a game. There was a fake game in the Apple store and a fake game in the Google store. And apparently you can charge, you know, $60,000 for the game. So you can do in-app purchases for 60 grand, which also means Apple, which is what their law, current lawsuit is, uh, got a little bit of that too. So uh, wow. it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out because I definitely did disclose all that to the authorities. Um, so anyways, Typhoon has a whole lot of things coming into this space, particularly uh, they're they're working on Fed now, and I think they've got a, a real head start on AI. As a matter of fact, they're coming yep. out to our um, innovation club out and uh, we're going to be a Connecta. And we're actually looking, I think we have like three or four more guest spots. So if you're in California and you're interested in coming out and, and, and uh, just seeing what the innovation club's all about, go ahead and post in the chat and Melissa will get with you. Um, and we're giving away socks with Scott's face on it. 
Uh, darn it. I was trying to get a spit take. I, I didn't quite Perfect. get it. Yeah, I was close. Yeah, I, I, you did make me gargle a little bit. Yeah. Well, you'll see the socks tomorrow during our meeting, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, so we're uh, we're excited to work with Typhoon on this. They're bringing out their expert in AI, but I think that they're on the right path on how they're looking at this. Because if we don't have some sort of modern ability to do fraud against these things, and we just turn them loose the same way we've done with just step up and MFA, uh, I just don't think it's gonna it's gonna um, I don't think it's gonna hold up. So. Without further ado, those are our sponsors, and as always, William Mills will be doing our giveaway. Today's giveaway is a Plod Note ChatGPT empowered AI voice recorder. Tell them what they've won, Mike. You're supposed to go a free trip to Malibu Whoa. and a lifetime supply of cigarettes. Um, no, no, this thing's trip and cool. connect to Federal Credit Union for the oh, Innovation yeah. Club. Yeah, yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Um, I, I, I finally got one, and I, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. it. It's just basically a transcriber, but man. It does a lot when you're trying to, you know, track down, like, what did they say? Especially if you're getting old, this is like the ultimate cure for Alzheimer's, too, because you're ever going to miss another thing. You can just keep going looking. It's like uh, that Memento guy. You ever see that movie Memento, Mike? Yes. Yeah. 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 You don't have to tattoo everything, though. You can just use this. So, you know, you're not limited by your body space like you were. So we're going to give a, do a giveaway on this at the end of it here, courtesy of William Mills Agency. And we're so thankful for their support as well. Um, but let's get to it. So I believe we're ready to have Anne, you know, take the take over this this thing take it and uh, give us some. Uh, and you and I, are, we're just hecklers now. So let's do it. I'm gonna get two hecklers. This is so cool. All right, we're like uh, Waldorf we're and Statler from the we're fan boys. Come on. Now. All right. So so hello everybody, and thank you so much, John, and thank you so much, Mike, for letting me be here and 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 get everybody to kind of think about what we need to succeed with AI, right? Um, I totally want to use the chat for a, section, uh, for a second. And I'd really like to ask, I want to just, if you've done this, put a Y. And if you haven't, you can put a no, but I'm just looking for the Ys, the, the letter Y. Yes. How many of you have already started playing with any sort of AI, generative AI tool? I'm looking for you're messing around with Copilot. Yep, yep, yep. Keep going. Let's see. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Keep going. I want to see more of you. Yes, cool. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good. Oh my gosh. Excellent. This, oh, yay. It's 100%. Right. This is the equivalent of the hand raise. Okay. Hey, John. John, what? Yeah. Heckler. You have not heard of AI? Excellent. Not no? one. Okay. Those things are scary. I say don't use them. All right. <laughs> so with that, um, I'm sure there was a ton of different use cases, right? Um, my personal favorite so far has been um, helping me figure out what to do with the leftovers in my fridge. This is important things. Really? When I'm looking at this, like at the credit union, <clears throat> I want you to think about a couple of things, right? Because the first thing is they're like, oh, I can see where I start messing around with it and it's cool. But then we start hearing about fraud and we start hearing about, you know, what kind of data am I going to put there and who's going to use it? So I want to kind of walk through a little bit, a couple of things. First of all, when we start thinking about all of this, right, I want to, I want to kind of highlight something that um, Kevin Martin, is Kevin Martin at uh, Schools First said. He's like, when we're thinking about this, think about the world's the impact it's going to have at the credit union. And there's three, and I'm just going to simplify this for you. Ready? It's going to impact our members. It's going to impact our mission and impact our margin. All right. Those are huge. Those are all drivers of our successes. So when we think about that, we want to say, hey, what the heck am I doing this for? Okay. So my first thought needs to be my strategy, right? And I need to assess where I am. So again, using chat, how many of you have already done an AI strategic assessment, a readiness um, assessment? If you have, put a Y in there to see how many people have looked at where they work and how they do that and how ready is it? <laughs> I'm seeing a quietness here in the audience. All right. So this is our first spot. We have to start thinking about how ready are we to use, and let's be real clear about this, generative AI is a tool. We like to think about it as like a magic box or a magic carpet or a decloaking device or whatever you want to think about it, right? But it's just a cool tool. So when we think about this, let's look at our needs, right? Let's just start off with a couple easy questions here, right? Why are we considering using generative AI? I would love to hear from you guys, either chat, open mic, why should we be considering this? Why is this even a thing? Make life easier, excellent. 
Is it right? Margin. Exactly. 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 And members and mission. Exactly. So cool. Thank you, Scott. Speed efficiency, right? Okay. So now we've thought about some things we want to think about, right? Those are some of the problems, right? When we look at some of the problems, we think about what's going on um, and definitely talk about the overlords. Let's replace the word overlords with the word members. We got to make our members happy. So how are we using generative AI to start solving member problems? And I want you to think about member problems in a slightly different way. The members coming to you, said credit union, to get four problems, just four problems. Those four problems are the member has a transportation problem. They don't walk around saying I have an auto loan. They're like, I have a transportation problem. They have a shelter problem. They either need it, they either rent it or buy it. They have a travel and play problem. That's obviously going to be purchase and then you can spend credit card. And then they have a rainy day and retirement problem. When we start thinking about generative AI and we think about the problems that they have, we have to start thinking about how are we going to solve some of those problems? Um, many of the things we think about are different case studies, but let's start back on that assessment. Why are we thinking about doing this? What problems? How literate, how literate is our audience right now, right? Exactly. On a scale of one to five, five being like we are complete literate rock stars. Anybody a five? If you're a five, put it in the chat. That was a negative four. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that would almost be like beyond illiterate, but anyways, yes. A one. Thank you, Richard. Exactly. I think I would be a negative four. Yeah. Nada. Yep. Yeah. Trish, one. Yes, exactly. We would be, as we like to think about it, very nascent, okay? So if we're trying to do something that's going to spin up something really complex, that's going to be difficult to get everybody around it right now to really understand. So we have to say, okay, if we're nascent, then we need to start back and start building up our strategy, right? How are we going to maintain for risk? How are we going to maintain for quality? So let's unpack this just a little bit, right? First things first, rule number one is you're looking at all of this. What the heck is my business why, right? We talked about to make life better. So let's bring that back in and let's merge that in with what is my, my organizational why? What's that member why? And let's put that in with some of our success metrics. Okay, guys, um, somebody toss out something, um, a metric that you're like, gosh, I wish I could see this metric better. Tell me, tell me right now where you're like, ooh, I see a number on my KPIs that I just wish mm -hmm. could be better. Throw it out. Are you guys looking at productivity? Are you looking at efficiency ratios? Are you looking at member engagement ratios? Um, the real number of members. Oh my gosh. Yes. How many members do I have? How about products and services? Member growth. Yes. Thanks, Scott. Exactly. How about um, reduced expenses? How about increased revenue? When we take our two buckets here, right? Like the member and our organizational problems, and we take our success metrics that's the stuff we have to think about, okay? So when we're looking at saying, I want to figure out kind of a use case for this, I want to say, look, how is this understanding my member? Yeah, it's member self-help service, right? How do we get that member to get more from what they have right now? How do we understand that pain point? How are we going to enfold what it's going to be? Like, because maybe it's not going to be, um, you know, something where we were talking about, you um, making recipes, but maybe it's something where we're saying, hey, I want to use this to help mitigate some serious um, fraud, right? So think about how we bring these pieces together. So I need to understand my readiness of my organization. You guys all kind of sort of gave me the whole, you know what, we're pretty nascent. And if we're nascent, then use cases need to be pretty simple. I need to make them simple. Why do I need to make them simple? A, I got to show some proof points. And B, I got to get people to use it. Let's jump in with Scott's self-service. So member self-service, Scott, um, give me a, a real good example of that. Scott Lindley. Like, are you talking about um, increasing final solutions on issues? Oh, yes. Okay, let me run with that. So let's see. Um, we want to be able to have a um, virtual assistant that can walk with them as if they were an actual human and say, 
this problem is here. Here are your options. I either solve it to you virtually, like I, I'm talking you through it. So I'm giving you audio. I'm going to walk you through it. So I'm going to give you tasks. I'm going to walk you through it in another different way, right? But what if I now had, so stay with me here. What if I just had now, I'm your service rep and I am talking to the member and I am using either the phone or text. And now I have enough of my resolutions serving up to me based on what I'm listening to, right? So I'm talking away and all of a sudden, boom, here's what you give up next and here's how you walk through, here's where they go. To do all that though, you guys, that's a lot. That is a lot. So let's talk out about in this example here of having, being able to serve up in real time solutions to the members to get them what they need when they need it. Who needs to be in the room? Who needs to be in the room? <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it depends, right? Like every credit union these days, I, I've seen credit unions to have these um, retail officers. Right. You know, that are, I think, are sort of dealing with uh, that. And then there's the e-group, which seems like, unfortunately, that sometimes that can be separate. And then there's this whole experience thing that I've seen out there. So there's there's been a number of sort of uh, ways I've seen that implemented. But I think that's what you're getting at, right? Like who needs to be in the room in order to, 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 because the hardest part of this whole thing is going to be getting buy-in from everyone and overcoming the fear, right? Boom. It's change. We're asking people to change. And what makes people freak out about change is change. So how do we get them to understand what's in for them? What's the benefit? And most importantly, right? So you've already gone to use case. I'm just saying, hey, hey, credit union, I want to raise my hand and say, I do this. I need to tell there's got to be a champion in there. It's got to be in a senior leadership position who's going to be able to say yes. There's got to be somebody who says, I'll step in and start doing it. There's got to be somebody who says, hey, I want to go do this with um, the board if there's going to be board oversight. We've got to get people in the room who will sponsor, who will champion, who will say yes. And then most importantly, what's that group of people are going to use it, right? Like we were just talking about maybe somebody in the call center or somebody in the front line. They want to be part of that conversation because they're going to be using it. So we have to be mindful of who's in the room. So what's our why? Who needs to be in the room, right? Who are the people? Who are we going to be cultivating to use AI? And now we need to think about how do we communicate out what we're doing? Many times we let our cool technology be in one area and then we just hope that it kind of gets out when it needs to be tested. AI is so new and so freaky, we can't really do that. We've got to get people in the room to talk about what? That I wanna do it, that we're ready to do it. Early stage. Why? Because we've gotta figure out, is that use case we're talking about the one we need to be doing? Is it the one that's connecting up to the widest problem? Is it the one that we should be doing? Just because somebody says, I think this would be cool to use AI for, doesn't mean that that's necessarily the way. So we have to think about what's going to be, a, what's going to solve an organizational problem. That's the way we um, look at our criteria. Then we get to come in and say, okay, so figuring out that. So, whole so thing. Anne, on that note, yeah, just, just to go backwards, we're actually working on something. Elliot and I are working on something for the IC that we're talking with David Lindner about uh, expanding out to the world. And it's an AI use case well, database. Yes. Um, but the challenge that we've seen or what we're running into just to come back is to your point, um, it's hard to like the real information for those use cases is going to come from, we think, middle management, um, because really they're the people who are closest to process, which is where the big opportunities probably are. Yes. But the challenge is, is that they haven't been sort of educated on what AI can do and can't do and what it's safe to do. And so there's this chicken and an egg kind of thing that we've been we've been sort of um, trying to think about how to overcome. You know, part of it is, you know, getting them to be allowed to play with it enough that they can see. But even then, like, you know, one of the things that happens frequently with like, and Elliot, you, you'd be a good example. Um, Elliot likes me to share my screen when I'm doing AI because he sees me do all this stuff like, but I'm not thinking about it. It's just how I've gotten to the point where I've got it to do what I want it to do. But then he adopts those things and runs off with them. And then sometimes he comes back and goes, oh, and I did this too. But that kind of experimentation and work, you know, sort of thing is, is in some cases being banned altogether. So right. I have a quick question for the audience to throw out there. How many of you have banned any form of AI 
for other than say senior executives, you know, out to the regular staff? Just put a, a one if you have. So we'll see in the chat. While we're waiting for um, <clears throat> response. But anyway, so that's that's part of what I see is like for well, where you're getting with on the in the room thing. And that's because we're so nascent. So how are we going to solve? How are we going to get our culture ready for this? Right. How are we going to cultivate that up? And to your point, we've got to start having some communication. We've got to start having some education around what it is, who can play with it. To your point, we need this early stage discussion, which says these people are going to be on a team to start messing around with it. Who are those people and what are they going to do with it? And before we can get to that, who's going to be messing around with it and you know, exploit, um, experimenting with it, we need to have somebody say, yes, we're going to do it. And we can't be fearful of it. And that's my biggest point. We've got to go all the way back to, I'm going to raise my hand and say, yes, I am going to be a sponsor. I am going to find a sponsor. And I'm going to say, these are the people that I want to start exploring it with. Okay, so so the big question someone's going to have yep. is by sponsor, do you mean, um, you know, the the person who, when, I'm just making fun here, but, I'm, but I know this is what people are thinking. Why won't people sponsor it? And I think that by sponsor, does that also mean that you will be responsible and this is a problem. You and I have talked about this before on, on yeah. the podcast and things, this, 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 that we conflate in the Korean space, you know, incompetence and failure, but by that person who sponsors, will they also by, by doing that, be taking on the risk and be the person that everybody goes, when, when AI goes crazy and gives everybody a mortgage for a dollar, um, you know, are they the ones that are going to get the, be the ones that get, beat up on because I think that's the that's the thought that I'm right. right and that's because and John to that point why would we ever let a use case get that far in the first place so if I'm so we need two people we need two people to take on this new technology I need somebody who champions it that somebody has got to be that point that says go I want said group to do it that's got to be a senior leader in that group there's got to be the person that says I will step and I'll be the project manager of it I'm going to get the people together. We're going to figure out use cases. Most importantly, most importantly, we're going to talk about risk and not freak ourselves out, right? But say, mm -hmm. you know, there's many things we have to think about, right? So the sponsor isn't there to the like sponsor it in production, but the sponsor is there to advocate for yes. the um for the discovery yes. process. Yes, advocate for the discovery. We've got to get somebody who said, and let, let's just walk through like what does this tactically look like, right? I am a CEO and I say, I'm a CEO or CFO, and I say, do it. Then I pluck the person in my organization to say, who wants to do it? And somebody raises their hand, it's gonna usually be the CTO, or maybe it'll be the CLO who says, I wanna mess around with this. They go, great. Then you are gonna, you are going to get a committee, you're gonna get people together in the room to discuss use cases, and you're gonna report back to me, and we're gonna do this at our monthly meeting, at our, our every two weeks, whatever we're gonna do. We have to have that first kickoff first, because if you just have somebody say, hey, I'll do it, and there's no accountability back up, and nobody's saying you will do it at that higher level, then it's it's really going to be st stuck in where? Like what we always do, which gets stuck in a little bit of a silo, and then nobody knows what we're doing, and it might get all the way out to putting together some sort of um, uh, use case that never gets tested and just goes to the, to the wide masses of the audience and isn't vetted properly. We've got to stop that. We've got to bring it in and say, I'm going to do it. And then I got to make sure that as I'm looking at that, I've got to say, okay, so when I bring the people together, again, that's where we go. Use cases. You want to get your leadership team together. And what you said, John, is so important. I need to get the people who will be using this tool, middle management, frontline, in the room together and say, what is that big problem? What do you wish? And nine times out of 10, it's going to be, you guys ask us, you said leadership, ask us to know 900 different standard operating procedures. I can't do that. Can right. you give me something? That will help me using narrative, you know, natural language. Say, how do I do a check override? How do I do a just just to what um, Scott was saying? How do I get this to be member service? And how do I do it fast and better? Now, now you have a great use case. Now you've got a piece that says, all right, who's going to do what and when? And that gets into later on going down the line, making sure we have risk covered. We've got to start off with like a charter document. What's our business problem? Who's going to be in the room? Who's going to say we have to be ultimately accountable? Who's going to manage this? And then what are these use cases? So I have something to share and move forward. Many times we're just like, I get you in the room and start experimenting. 
And there's nothing wrong with that, but that place is a little bit down the whole discovery funnel. Here's the part that we have to be so mindful about is that we are trying to measure success. We want to see, can we do this? And if we're a very nascent culture, like you all just you know self-reported, we've got to figure out how to get in front of that and get people excited about it. And if that, if I'm looking at the front line and I'm looking at my middle management and their problem is, again, 900 SOPs and I, there's, and I got nothing for it. That's a pretty cool one to help with the education, to help understand the tool. This now, now if I have this brushed out on a one page document that says, this is what I'm thinking about. Now I can think about collaboration, right? Do I buy, do I partner? Where do I go with that? And that's where we start making sure we have some other boxes around risk. You guys, when we think about taking a lot of data so that we data, whether it's going to be 900 SOPs and we want to put that together, we really have to be thinking about security of the data. Where's it going to live? Who's going to have access to it? So access control, what, what kind of security around that storage? If I'm using a third party, who's there? How do I get model validation? How do I make sure that this is what I want? How do I make sure I'm biased? You know, how do I manage for bias mitigation? And how, this is the most importantly, how do I manage for continuous monitor of this, right? Once I set out, let's just say, for example, I do a, um, I create some beautiful uh, natural language chat bot that's going to look at all my SOPs, right? How do I make sure that that keeps doing what it's supposed to do, meeting our criteria? This isn't just a one shot. This is a continual thing that I want to keep testing and improving, right? So I'm going to have to make sure that I have an audit. If I don't talk well, about those things up front, how am I going to know how to measure my success and how to measure my progress? I'm just going to Yeah, and I think that where you're going is a lot like um, the same thing we went through for data model or data governance, right? Yeah. Because unfortunately, what we're really good at as credit unions is we all get together and do something. Yep. Like there's no better team to have than I, we could we could win wars as long as the war was one battle and we could attack it, get it done with. Right. But and then we kind of go back to our corners. And I feel like that's a as a result of sort of mergers and conversions that we have this culture where if the project's big enough, we all get together, we attack it, we blitz it, we win. But when, we, when it comes to ongoing, what you were just saying, sort of ongoing maintenance or continuous yeah. maintenance, that's a struggle for us. And, and to your point, that's going to be one of the biggest challenges of AI because it's going to be just like having a person. And the good news is it can learn instantly. The bad news is it can learn instantly something that's not right. And yeah. it can then tell all the other AIs instantly that that wrong thing is policy. Like right. it's okay to be naked at work, you know, and the next thing you know. Well, let's give a And I know like with William don't. Mills, that'd be a big problem. But for everywhere else, it's, you know, most people wear pants at least, but, but a big too, to be honest. But, but yeah, but let's talk about that because there's a great, great, great use case out there in the marketplace. This was um, an airline and I am not going to reveal which one. They too had a bot out there. And um, the example was um, a customer went in and said, hey, I have to go get this flight and it's going to be a bereavement flight. What's your bereavement process? Because you can get your flight discounted if you walk through whatever their cost, their whatever the airline requests that you share about bereavement, right? Um, anyways, the crazy part about this was they're using the chatbot and Patrick's like, you've got 90 days, you're fine. So user airline, you know, the um, person comes back and they're like, yeah, I've got my 90 days, here they go. And the airline goes, actually, that's not our policy. That's another airline's policy. And the flyer, you know, the passenger goes, but here's the screenshot, very savvy person to do that, that says, this is your chatbot. So who owns the liability? The chatbot's going out and pulling all this information and then sending it out to the end user, but it's not, it's it's aggregating from a data set that wasn't contained. Right? It's the airline. It's the airline that Completely. provided that answer. Yeah. Right. Right. So, but then they're looking at it and they're like, oh, I'm only as good as my vendors. Boy, is that not a thing we've ever experienced? And so now their vendors, they're going to have to say, dude, how do we fix this? Right. And I'm sure that's, what we're doing. but that's the stuff we have to get in front of. So how are we going to do that? We can't get in front of that unless we start talking about some of those risk pieces that you talked about up front. Like, I don't want to say, how is it going to explode? Because that sounds so negative, but Hey, let's walk through those pieces again. Right. Where is my data I'm using for this? Who has access to it? 
How secure is it? Where am I storing it? Who are my third parties accessing or using it? How do I model validate it? How do I manage for bias, liability, and then uh, continuously monitoring? Okay, so that's eight things. We never talk about maybe one or two of them. We have to put that framework up front and go, what, we're never going to catch all of it, but we need to walk into doing this mindfully. This is the game changer of all game changers we've ever experienced. If I'm asking somebody to be a human and replace, right? If I'm going to hire AI to do my AI, as Cognition is doing with Devin, then how do I structure myself up to make sure that not only am I feeling confident about where I'm going, but excited about it? That's a lot, you guys. That's a lot. And that's why I think the hard part is we aren't having these conversations up front. We're just running in and going, hey, go play with this. But we have to. We have to go, okay, who says I need to do it? All right, who's going to then lead me in that team? In my team, though, I need to have that conversation. What am I going to be using this for? What what problem? What And ideally, what member problem? And I still love anchoring, you know, on what Scott said. He's like, hey, get it up front, man. How do I get the member to start doing stuff? Well, how do we get our staff to start getting some incredible um, resolutions? There's a great tool out there. Um, here, let me use the chat. How many of you using a Y are familiar with what Senso's doing with um, CU 2.0 in their um, consortium? Mm -hmm. How many of you are familiar with that? Put a Y in there. If you are, ooh, I am seeing Ghostland. Okay, let me explain what that is. So um, John was just talking about a gentleman, the founder of a company called Senso. Senso is an AI company. Oh, Senso. Senso. Yep, Senso is fabulous. Senso has collaborated with a group called CU 2.0 and they've created what they call a consortium of credit unions. This is a nice group of credit unions that they said, hey, what do you want to solve? And they've come up with two really cool solutions. But I love this because it's not just one credit union and one technology. It's, as you just said, John, getting all of our credit unions in the room to say, what do we need to solve? They came up with a whole really cool um, solutions. Two of them, I'm just going to highlight. One is called, and they've called their product CU Copilot. And don't be confused with Microsoft's Copilot because everybody gets confused with that. This is CU Copilot. Um, and you know what, John, I'll send you some information on, on how to find them. And they've got two products. One is Agent Fetch. And what it does is it literally goes across what we talked about and fetches the answers through all of your policies, your procedure documents, and it comes back and helps you do two things. Number one, what are the conflicts? So it goes right back to your problem. Ooh, what is what is incorrect in my policies and procedures? And then two, how do I fix it? Now, if I've got that going on learning all the time and then I have people accessing it, I'm gonna constantly be putting the best out there. Um, some of the results have been nuts. They have been able to, oh gosh, something like 17, I think it used to take like 15 minutes to get a back office answer and they now have it down in seconds because I just have to, it's as fast as I can type. So they have one, the second one they have um, is called uh, Agent Echo. And this is the one I think is equally as crazy. It takes unstructured member conversations in real time to provide cross-functional insights to multiple stakeholders, all right? So I am listening in, but not creeped out by that at all. I'm listening in and I'm able to say, oh my gosh, we have a problem. This is what we need. This is what you need to serve up. And here it is. So imagine if I have all the access to all my documents, I can hear the problems and I can in real time deliver. Then think about how you could connect that up to say, is this what I need to deliver? Here comes in possibly a marketing channel that's gonna be good for you. Here comes in possibly a product modification that's perfect for you. All this stuff we already have, we just haven't brought them together to get out there. So this consortium is solving these problems that you know a credit union can get in and get involved to use. So that's kind of like, kind of one of our best options at this point to be able to say, hey, I wanna get into this and I don't wanna build it myself so I can get in there. But you can absolutely build it yourself if you want to. But before I go to either one of those, I need to understand what am I doing it for, right? Who needs to be in the room? How do I do this? What about some of the, the solutions out there that are off the shelf? Um, how many people are familiar with um, uh, Aviary AI? Put a Y in the chat if you've heard of them. Sweet. 
course you know them, Mike. <laughs> but I just had them on last week. Good. Okay. Well, then you know this whole thing. So this is crazy. The, okay, just to take yourselves back, what they have created is to have a human voice outbounding call. Okay. So think of your outbound call agents, and now you've just made it a bot. And it's all done through AI. It takes natural language, it comes in at natural language, and it solves and starts asking problems and answers and has a conversation very naturally. This came out from another product they had been doing, and they realized that outbound calling is a huge challenge for credit unions because you do so many of it, you can't, you know, you don't get pickups as much. Um, people aren't so jazzed when you call. And now, if you can take this and do this, it's like, boom, ooh, can we get a slide on the eight pillars? You are absolutely right, uh, Roger. I thought we'd have more of a conversation, so I didn't give a slide, but I will get you one. I'll give you a slide on the five things you need for readiness, and then I'll put in there your eight things, and I'll also give you a link for um, uh, the places I talked about, the CU Copilot and um, Aviary. How does that sound? Cool. I mean, I'll send, it, I'll send it on to you, John, and then you guys can send it out. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Cool. You know, I, I do have a question for you. Um, so I, I know you, you talked about getting everybody together into a room, but but I I would find that challenging to say, look at everybody, hey, we want to do an AI, we want to look at AI use cases. They they can't even have that conversation. They they they're they're not they're not sophisticated enough to do that. And it's not a knock on them. They're sophisticated in their areas, but not in this. And well, yeah, let me tell you how you do that if you if that's what you're asking. Well, no, the 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 <laughs> the, the point that I'm making is that even though that's the case, like I, I talked to these folks about, well, before we before we talk about AI, and I would encourage us that we we would do so, we need to talk about data governance. And they literally looked at me and said, You need to stop using words we don't understand. Roger, you are so spot on. Okay. So no, you're, no, you're so spot on. And let and let me explain. Don't talk about data. Don't talk about AI. Talk about the member. Yeah. So well, and that that's where we that's where we that's where I kind of get to in the sense that there needs to be some level of leading of this on on our part because I will tell you these same people who struggle with not understanding have already adopted a system that allows them to do AI decision making for loan underwriting, right? Exactly. Exactly. But the reason they were able to do that is because it that data is not our data. It's it's all contained outside, right? They're not really utilizing anything that would cause risk. And right. so there needs to be some kind of leading on our part that says, okay, getting there is inherent risk in doing this, but but doing that, um, that inherent risk comes from these kinds of applications. Now that we've got that started, let's talk about how that might be useful for for us right does that does that make sense yeah let me let me come back and and and, and let me tell you what I heard yeah hey you talked exactly about that big pain point we're ones in a scale of one to five yeah. we, don't know, we don't know what we don't know and half the time we're like I'm not sure what that is right so your point is hey how how have we possibly gotten you know zest AI in there or synaptic to help us with our lending because it was safe and secure because a use case helped test us out. So how do we get everybody to get beyond that and have conversation? Because if we do that, and let's be honest about this, we are not saying, hey, let's walk in and do AI use case. You say, hey, I'm going to go to the front line. In fact, you know what? And, and we've done this um, work. I'm going to go to the front line, to the business unit leaders. I'm going to go to my C-suite and I'm going to go to my board. And I'm going to say, tell me about the friction that the member has doing business with us. Yeah imagine what you get. And let me tell you, the stuff we get is so chock full of interesting stuff. The board, the board's like, uh, some boards are really great and they will tell you right away they see the friction. Your leadership team is gonna be wonderful because they're gonna be looking at it in that strategic and tactical level. Your front line is gonna say to you this, we make the member sign for too many things. That my friend is a beautiful AI use case. So somebody has to lead that conversation knowing that we're trying to look, we're, we're talking about the member's problem first, using the member language that we are all fluent in and getting them to discuss it in the member friction language. What's the friction the member's doing business with us? It's gonna be time, 
it's going to be it, nine times out of 10. There, there are three, there are three different frictions, right? We have product frictions. Our stuff's highly regulated. It's not sexy. It's not as easy as getting socks. Understood. We also have people frictions. I'm not here to discuss that. We have process frictions. And that's where we have a ton of all that good stuff in there. Like you talked about, Hey, I'm not gonna walk to you and say, what's my AI? You say, I'm gonna say, what's my member friction? And then I'm gonna look at those frictions and go, hey, if we solved these, what metric is that gonna help us? And that metric is gonna be like, hey, I'm gonna get member satisfaction. I'm gonna get time to value. I'm gonna get close ratio. I'm gonna get efficiency. I'm gonna get productivity. I'm going to get product that we need. Those are the two languages we talk. We talk member problem and we talk how we measured inside. That is where you now get to say, okay, going back to we solve things and we take we make the member sign for too many things. Great. What is that process right now? How am I going to use technology to help me solve it? Now, now I know the people in the room, right? Roger, is this making, is this resonating? Am I being able to put some it, good dots together? It, no, I mean, I, that all of that makes sense. Um, but there's a, the, the 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 disconnect i guess it, at least from my point of view yeah. uh, is that um we could do that but it, it just it, it will take a really long time to get to those answers because i don't get to have those conversations more than once a month maybe with 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 leadership because they're too busy for this right they don't have that kind of time to invest to slowly move their way there we okay. need to we need to get them there a little faster than that, right? And that's and you know what, Roger, what you just described for me is somebody's not championing it. You do not have somebody at the C suite who says we will. Uh, yeah, that. because our our that that won't work, right? The <laughs> it, it, it it won't work because because they look at that and go, well, that's an IT thing. You come and tell me what to do. Well, then you come and say, I want to survey everybody and understand the member friction. Yeah, and they'll go, sorry, we don't have time for that. Right. You figure it out and tell us what we want to know. Then, that that's that's a typical response. I don't know if people other people on the call get that, but I do all the let's, time. let's let's put let's, <laughs> no no Roger, you are so awesome. And thank you so much for sharing because this is the stuff we want to have robust conversation on, right? This is the real, this is how we live our lives. So on the chat, I'm just curious how many of if you are saying I have felt that, give me a why. If you've said just me, <laughs> put a hot minute. Let, let's ask. Let's ask this on a different question. All right, on a scale of one to five, five being oh my gosh, what Roger said, my world is I am one hundred percent. If you are more like you know what, I'm more like a three. Sometimes I have some bumming along. Sometimes I just don't have guidance. Sometimes I've never thought about asking my front line. Then maybe you're a three, and maybe you're like oh no, we are rock stars. We have a list of um we already have a team together which i know you don't because you already said you guys aren't doing that but on a one to five scale where tell me a bit about where you guys sit i'm just curious i'm looking at who's kind of your three four and fives two three four and fives where are you just rate yourself on where you think and how you relate hey jim thanks wow. yeah exactly because we're all early so Come on, guys. I know you can score yourselves and share. You guys are good sharers. So if we're all sitting there going, gosh, I don't know where to start. Start with the member problem. Start with where the member needs you. And the member right now is saying, look, I have got a shelter problem. I either need to make my rent or I need to get into a house. I have a transportation problem. Cars are much better than they were in the pandemic but the rates are still high, right? I have a travel and play problem. I wanna do stuff and boy, man, travel is a vengeance. So how are you gonna help me get there? And I have a rainy day and I have a retirement problem. You, you phrase things that I think of as, as opportunities, as problems. And, and I get, you know, we're, it's the same thing. I, I, I think of AI initially as helping with a lot of things that are hidden in the back office or, you know, let's let's catch credit card fraud easier. It's it's kind of way back there, but you're describing really upfront um, problems or opportunities uh, that are bigger issues with the customers, like how to retire or how to yeah. plan for a vacation. And so, I, I, it's so the first time I've heard about it discussed in this way, and just thought I'd share. 
and and Scott, to your point, when I think about that up front, I'm looking at it, and let's just let's just talk about um, um, transportation for a hot minute, right? We have to look at that journey that the member comes in to get that done. Okay, how many times does a member come into you and be like, "Oh, I need an auto loan"? No, they're like, "I need an auto," and it's going to be a trigger. It's going to be my car broke down. I need a new car. I need a small car. I need a cheaper car. I need something, right? And those are things we know, yet we don't think about how do we start using technology to solve that? How do I know what channel you're gonna be in? How am I gonna serve you up the right offer? How am I going to get to some of these pieces? And maybe it's gonna to be to the point we talked about earlier, maybe it's because we don't have the front line that's able to cue and understand when those questions are happening, serve it up nicely. So I'm now taking a member problem, right? What the member comes to us to get solved a resolution and I'm trying to put technology to it and bring it together. And I cannot come up with those things unless I have the right people in the room. And, you know, Roger is unfortunately in a situation where he's like, I can see this, but it's going to, it's going to take me, I'm going to be shouting at a mountain and that mountain's never going to move, which is super unfortunate because if we want to get this to go and we want, we know how it can be, we've got to create, how can we come up with a conversation of, why this is going to work and if well, I don't, I, yeah. you know and, and i guess i guess one of the things that i i think about is there are there are certain different kinds of problems right and it, it, the conversations would go much easier if i were able to come with advice on the different types of problems right so there are operational issues Yep. Like, and we do training better. Can we, can yeah. people answer questions better? Then there are operational issues in call center. How can we get information out to members, members easier? Then there are the kinds of questions you were just asking. What are, what are members issues? And then there are those kinds of questions like with Zest AI that, that are completely outside of the domain of, of the data that would be required to create those solutions for uh for members that can be bought off the shelf and they have they have com I, from my point of view they have completely different risk profiles all of those things and so it would be kind of incumbent on on us to be able to go okay let's let's put some structure to this and then have the conversation so that there's a basis for the conversation i don't know those those are those are just some of my thoughts well, but Roger, you bring a really good point because now you're thinking about it at that very first of like the discovery funnel, right? Of innovation. What are those problems? How do I identify them? And how do I know? And how do I prioritize them? So how do I know, right? How do I know? Um, Jay brought up a really good point. He said he had, he had staff that cashed horribly fake checks, much um, less those um, that, are, that are the problem we're discussing right now, right? Yeah, fraud. Fraud is a, I mean, John tipped us up at the very beginning. Fraud is a huge opportunity to be able to use technology. Um, I think to your point, and I'm John, I'm looking at what you just put in the, the chat around, this is going to transform everything we do, but we cannot be, um, we can't be um, paralyzed by its enormity. We have to break it into teeny, tiny, little digestible use cases or nuggets, it's hungry, I'm, and there's lunch over here, um, and figure out how to get those going so that the Rogers of the world can say, this is what we're gonna do and keep learning on it and keep adding more so that I keep doing more and more and more. Um, the part about, I think that I'd love everybody to be thinking about is how do I start that conversation? And my my ask of you is to say, what is the friction? You're, you're, members have doing business with you. And if you can start that and ask that question, I think that's going to be huge in helping you identify use case and prioritization. This goes back to what's your why? Because if you can figure out what your why is, then what can you do, which is what Roger just asked us to do, which is if I got a why, I got an ROI, and now I can tell you what it's going to do. And I really have to walk in and say, if I'm going to explore doing this, this is the impact measurable to member mission and margin. Ooh, Andy, you are so right on. Andy said, machine learning, gender AI are often confused. And I think machine learning fintechs are already becoming dated. Right, right. We have to start thinking about, th there is a whole education piece. And there is actually a really great white paper. It, um, I'll make sure I add this to the um, documents. How many of you are familiar with the um, um, 
Mitchell Stankovich, um, Underground Values. It's a really long title. Yes, Sarah, I think you are. They have a white paper, 74 pages. I'll make sure I put the link in there. That thing is golden. It will look at, it, it helps you understand use cases, helps you understand looking at the way we get to think about it and how this helps our overall industry. Um, it's a really good starter spot if we're looking for education to start getting ourselves to think. Uh, John, you're saying that AI can be both digital and personal at the same time. Yeah, this I, everything we're talking about are the use cases of AI, but we've got to get in front of that and say, hey, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Then what would be our return? What would be that success metric? And who needs to be in the room to have that conversation? Were we having a similar conversation six, seven, eight years ago about digital transformation when that was first coming about? Yeah. And then so... What did we learn from that? And and can that be applied to this new AI revolution Absolutely. or evolution as we're talking about? Absolutely. So my question to everybody here would be, how many of you have a digital transformation strategy? Give a why. Because that was a big ocean to swallow, if you will, or a big right. elephant that all those, you know, metaphors that we were talking about back then. Right. So. And so how many people, how many people did? Not too many people did have strategies and not too many today do. And yeah. now you find yourself swimming around with situations that have problem because I've been able to not go strategy, but uh, I just solution. Man, I was so lost in your conversation. I lost track of time. I've been just sitting here thinking about digital transformation as it relates to the, to this. And, and we're going to close it out here, but I do think that, um, you know, maybe Ann, you want to, we can help you, but you know, maybe we want to run a second one of these. Part two. And, and, and part two, but not maybe in the town hall format, maybe we give it a little more time because I think there's a lot of good discussion going on here. But Absolutely. I will say this, the it it would be a mistake to conflate. The, I bring up the digital transformation because we're still trying to do it, but those mm -hmm. two things are not comparable. AI really is an opportunity to do something that we don't like to do at Credit Unions, which is to burn down the forest. And yeah. sometimes you have to burn it down in order to find your way through. But what we've been doing for a long time is really working on um, really working on uh, the idea of how do we take our current processes and digitize them, or how do we take digitized processes and integrate them into the staff? Yeah. This new, you know, the promise of AI is a completely zero interface approach. And, and I'll, I'll just give the quick example of this and then I'll let it go. So. You could have a chat GPT type interface that was hooked into your account and you say, hey, I'm looking for all the transactions for this particular thing, um, you know, this particular merchant. And oh, by the way, can you find the statements that those are on? Now, if you wanted to do that in our click and click and shoot process, you'd have to go to the statements, you'd have to go to each statement, you'd have to go and search, you'd have to then find them, you'd have to then save them. The promise of AI is to take all that interface out of your way and just answer your question. There's a great um, website that Elliot and I discovered called Perplexity AI. If you haven't seen this, check it out. Maybe Elliot, you put it in the chat real fast while I'm talking. Perplexity AI, it, so instead of being a search engine, they call themselves an answer engine. And I think that's what we're headed to is home banking will become answer engines and not research engines. Research engines mean you have to do the research yourself. Answer engines mean that you're going to be able to ask it questions. And this was just awesome. Roger, I love your I love that somebody got in and threw out some ideas because those are the things we need to hear on having a realistic, honest discussion about this that isn't all, you know, uh, kittens, rainbows, and uh, you know, uh, whatever else that you want to add in there. So we got to get to this. We're right at time. Uh, do we have everybody in? And let's do this again on behalf of uh, William Mills Agency. Thank you for sponsoring our giveaway. And we're going to see who gets it here. So if you got some more names, let's get them in. They have to be present to win. By present, Roger I mean at my house. So uh, go ahead and throw my name in. Uh, fortunately, if mine doesn't come up, I'll just have to keep it till next week. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. Do we have everybody? One last call. Nope. Let's spin her.
<laughs> Roger wins. Roger gets it. Does he? Oh, oh. Oh, Roger. Oh, okay. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. That's a, big a photo thing. finish there. <laughs> was. Wow. All right. Well, Roger, we actually have your information. We know where to find you. So we'll Things get that. But we can't give it to you. We got to give it to Jay because, uh, well, it's just uh, this way that the wheel rolls. It's the will of the wheel. And well, we do not, we do not uh, question the wheel. Well, thank you, folks. I think this was a great discussion, and I do think I'd like to carry it on, Anne. So Love let's uh, you and I get together on that. And uh, if anybody's interested in uh, joining us, maybe for even a little separate discussion on this, uh, please let us know. You can just send an email into my group and we'll, or Anne. Um, Anne, how do people find you if they want to talk about this more? You know, it should you be. Put your contact information in the chat, maybe. Go fast. I will. Here we go. Hold on a sec. All right. You can find me at. All right. Well, I can't thank everyone enough for joining. I think this is important discussion to have because we can't do with this what we did with digital or we will go from 5,000 gray units to not a lot. We're going to have to figure this out and take a different approach. I really believe that. And I think it hands on to something here. I think it's going to take a village and um, we're just going to have to have a lot of discussions. So thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Thanks, Thank Anne. You. Thanks for your, your expert guidance. It was really good. Thank you, John. And we'll talk soon, okay? All right. Well done. Thanks, everybody.